Hi everybody. Here's another winsome witnessing moment and this is basically the chapters from this book distilled into bite-sized pizzas so that it's not uh, such a big thing going over these uh, longer videos. So they're about a half hour, 35 minutes each, so they're not terribly long. And please do watch them if you can. But I'm going to cover in part three here, three chapters, chapters five, six, and seven from the book Winsome Witnessing by Gary Gibbs. He can present a much better job, of course, but I'm going to do my best just to give you um, the kernel of what's talked about here in a shortened version. So he talks about, first off, in chapter five, how to double God's joy about the personal need for going out and winning people for Christ. And what I mean by that is that the work can only be done if people personally go out and just reach one more person for God's kingdom. Even if it's over a year's time and you only see one person respond and enter the waters of baptism for God's kingdom, that is part of building God's kingdom that is essential because we can't rely on big event-based means of reaching people for Christ. That's just the reality. That's how the early church was, is that the personal touch was where it was at. And he goes over the numbers even here as well. If you just have uh, believers exponentially multiplying because just one more person reaches one more disciple or makes one more disciple by God's grace, the church will grow in leaps and bounds as opposed to a gifted evangelist. Even if he were to convert 1,000 people in a day, just one person multiplying themselves each year will exponentially bring many, many people to Christ. In fact, that's the only way the work is going to uh, be furthered in a measurable um, and make a measurable impact is if people are willing to just find that one person that they can reach out to for God's kingdom. Moving on to chapter 6, he talks about Bible studies and how when it comes to seed sowing and studying people one-on-one -on -one in scripture, you need to have a list of contacts in order to make that a reality. So we're looking for one more person to invite into God's kingdom, but in order to see that happen, we really need a list of more people that we're interacting with and planting seeds. He recommends 30 Bible studies going each week on an ongoing basis. So that fits within the schedule of a Bible worker who's working um, eight hours a week. And bear in mind, that's the paradigm he's working with here. So I know a lot of us, we have jobs, we have things going on, we have uh, many tasks at home. So he's not suggesting every single member of the church do 30 studies a week. That'd be wonderful, I have to say. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, that would be a wonderful thing. But uh, let's be realistic here. If we, as a team, just have a few Bible studies a week, even in that case, we still need a list of contacts. Maybe if each of us has 10 people that we have within our sphere of influence that we're connecting with and whom we're actively seeking to invite into God's kingdom or into the church, then maybe a couple people we can get Bible studies with and start that ongoing basis, on an ongoing basis, I should say, studying with them each week. But anyway, he's working from the paradigm of a Bible worker and he's saying, we waste so much time trying to knock on doors and get these studies going. Instead, let's jump to actually where the rubber meets the road, studying with people in their homes. Well, you're saying, you might be thinking, how do we do that? How is that possible? We need to actually have the interests and have the connections first before we can jump to actually going into the home and studying. How do we do that? Well, he recommends, first off, going out and connecting with all the people who we already have made connections with through prior meetings, through people who have attended in the past but uh, aren't attending at this point. Um, we have a long list of contacts that we've already uh, made because of friends of the church or folks who have attended in the past and that sort of thing. He says, focus on those people first and along with that, send out a mailing of Bible study cards which usually yields about one to three people per 100 cards. So he's saying, if you do that, you'll have a list. There's just no doubt about it. You'll have a list. And it may be a list of a few hundred people 
that's not beyond the realm of possibility there. That's actually quite likely if you do both these things. And then, as a team, just focus on connecting with these people and offering those studies. If you do that, you'll have your list of 30 people. You can divide that up as a team and each person go and start studying with those people and you'll have a solid list of people you're studying with and you can look forward to helping them realize the privilege of entering into a deeper friendship with Christ, which is always the priority, no doubt about it, but also have the privilege of inviting them into the body of Christ as well and encouraging them to take that step, not in a coercive way by any means, but allowing for them to make that decision through invitations, through making appeals, and that sort of thing as well. Friends, that is how we double God's joy, is the personal interactions that lead to people committing themselves to Christ and to entering his kingdom. That's what the Bible says, that God's joy comes from just one sinner entering the kingdom and once again being reconciled to their creator and their redeemer. I have a quote here that I want to read that really touched me. And this is uh, where he's talking, uh, Gary Gibbs is talking about how we need to plant seeds and do that liberally. Just go and seek conversations and plant seeds here and there and not be reserved or conservative in our connecting with people about the gospel. Anyway, this is Desire of Ages, pages 151-152. Ellen White says, he, Christ, reached the hearts of people by going among them as one who desired their good. He sought them. He didn't hold back. He didn't wait for them to come to him. He went proactively. He sought them in the public streets, in private houses, on the boats, in the synagogue, by the shores of the lake. And at the marriage feast, he met them at their daily vocations and manifested an interest in their secular affairs in order to reach all classes. We must meet them where they are. They will seldom seek us of their own accord. So I encourage you, friends, to make that a priority as well. Thank you.